before the break, um, we discussed some of the combo bowl games, uh, World Cup qualifier games. We move on to discuss the Nations League games that happened today, obviously excluding the game we already covered earlier on in today's show. And that was... Uh, and that was England taking on Greece. But there was some other games that happened. Italy took on Belgium. Um, Italy went up. This game being played in Rome, by the way, at the um, at the uh, Stadio Olimpico, home of Roma Lazio. And it was um, and it was the host that took a brilliant lead, getting early goal again in these nations league. They scored really early on against um against France. Similar similar timing here, um with Andrea Cambiasso getting a goal fifty nine seconds into the match. Speaking of Rategi, who you know plays his home football now at the Stadio Olimpico, playing for Lazio. He got the second. He's been having a pretty good year so far for um, Atlanta. Um, you know, he's maybe now the answer for Italy, you know, in their, you know, number nine position going forward. There was some, you know, there was some expectations of him when, you know, Italy was able to recruit him um, as a dual national because, you know, he is a, he is a born, he's born in, Raised in Argentina, Argentina, uh, Argentina, um, but he does have I- Italian descent, so he he is a dual national and he is eligible to play for Argentina. And Italy were able, you know, despite Argentina the success that they went on winning that World Cup, you know, they were able to recruit him to play for the likes of um, Italy. And you know maybe it could be that ish uh, that solution, but um, that's not where the game ended. Though Nortegi got the second, Belgium were able to play themselves in the game in the huge turning point game in the fortieth minute. Lorenzo Pellegrino's Pellegrini's red card, um, and I do have to say in that before that red card though. Italy were playing some brilliant football and they were wiping Belgium away and I was very very impressed with Italy because so far we've seen of them from you know post this European Championship so far the start of the Nations League they've been really really good uh, in my opinion but when that red card came as expected playing up against an opposition like Belgium that does have some quality it was gonna always be difficult playing down a 10 men and immediately following that red card Maxim de Kuiper Kui- Cooper um, got the equalizing goal in the 42nd minute. And then later on in the second half, eventually Trossard, who always makes those impacts in clever ways, poked in a you know really clever volley um, from Wout Feist's header. And, uh, and yeah, that made that game 2-1. to one. So now uh, in that group, Italy uh, right now, find themselves or well let's discuss the other game in that group which was France uh, France taking on Israel playing this game obviously without Mbappe the French national team um, won for the one despite not playing with Mbappe now Israel Israel was the home team in this game but we know the geopolitical issues going on in that in that place. So this game was played in Hungary, which always happens to be the the neutral sites. So, you know, you remember during COVID, um, Champions League, whenever um, uh, teams couldn't go away and to a specific country like Spain, they couldn't play in England. Spanish teams couldn't play in England when Atletico Madrid took on. Chelsea, they had to play the game. They had to play. Um, Atletico had to play their home game in Budapest. But yeah, France they got this four four one win. Um, dominated the game. Israel the only shot on the only shot they had was the goal with uh Gendelman, Omri Gendelman. That was their only shot. That was the only shot on target. Kamavinga he was able to get on the score sheet. Nkunku playing in Mbappe's absence as well. And then and then the, to close out the game. Gunduzi and Barcola to make it 4-1 for France. 
And if you look at the standings there, you have Italy top with seven points uh, after three. Uh, France sitting second with six. Belgium sitting third with four. And then Israel is dead last with zero points from three games. Um, and they're kind of, you know, they're kind of really struggle to, you know, get a single point in this group. And that's a difficult group with Italy, France, and Belgium. Mm -hmm. We will go through some of the um. The, that was it for the part one games, but we will go through some of the part two. You know the other part games. Moldova they played Andorra. They won two nil. North Macedonia three nil win over Latvia. Gibraltar and San Marino. The you know the matchup everybody was looking for. Gibraltar got a 1-0 win. How many games can Gibraltar, you know, say they're going into as the favorites? Um, <laughs> you know, actually, no, I, I need to be fair, though. Gibraltar is unbeaten in their last four. They beat Andorra. They beat San Marino. They tied with Liechtenstein. They tied with Wales. So, you know, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't be too overly critical. You know, you go back. I think it was in the qualifiers. Was th they lost four. 14 nil to France, I believe. Yeah, it was November 18, 2023, World Cup qualifier. But um, but yeah, they get but Gibraltar they get the win. Um, they get the win today, um, over San Marino. Um, Ireland to get a two one win over Finland. Obviously, these are the two other teams. Um, Outside of the group of England and Greece, and let's actually look at the that's a League B standing, that's a League B group. But let's look at the standings there. Greece find themselves top with nine points, England was six, and then Ireland was three points, and Finland was none. Um, you know, Finland, let's see if they can be more competitive in that group. Finland actually qualified for the European Championships a few years ago, the one in 2021. So, um, you know, there's you know, there's some life there. At least there was. Um, Austria, 4-0 win over Kazakhstan. Good bounce back from them from a disappointing international window last time around where they lost, where they drew Slovenia and then they lost to uh, uh, Norway. Um, but 4-0 win for uh, Austria after a really good European championship for them. I um, believe they reached the quarterfinals or no, they lost in the 16th to, um, to Turkey. Yeah, that was a wild one, that game. Uh, Norway defeats Slovenia 3-0. Holland keeps getting on the score sheet. Brace for, brace, for, um, brace for Norway in the 7th and 62nd minutes. Alexander Sorlov also was able to get a goal. Norway operating with a two-man two man up front. Um, they're able to get three past Jan Oblak in the Slovenians. Um, Faroe Islands and Armenia finished 2-2. Then, yeah, I discussed the Italy's 2-2 draw with Belgium. So, yeah, that's uh, that's all for today's UEFA Nations League action. Tomorrow you have, um, tomorrow uh, you got Hungary taking on the Netherlands. You got Bosnia and Herzegovina taking on Germany. You got Croatia. No, that's, 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 oh, yeah, no, that's not tomorrow, actually. Um, technically, um, Hungary, Netherlands, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Germany. Those games are technically today because we're past midnight, but you know what I mean. You also have Estonia taking on Azerbaijan, Ukraine taking on Georgia, Turkey taking on Montenegro, Slovak Slovakia taking on Sweden, Iceland taking on Wales, Czechia taking on Albania. So a lot of nations, the games tomorrow to check out. 